Hello. Apparently, I am live. Live. We are live. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Hey, look, recursion. Cool, huh? Alrighty, that's good enough for me. Ooh, forgot one thing. Let's make the Discord announcement so that we officially are live. Wonderful. Do we get the new logo? We don't. <laughs> I, uh, this morning, spent some time designing a new logo, which is based on the lambda, the lowercase lambda letter. I like it a lot. I got the Discord notification on my phone. We are officially live. Hello, everybody. How's it going? We have done it. Today, we will be working more on the fun compiler. We really got to get a better name. And uh, I believe I wrote down some stuff to do yesterday. If I remember properly. Maybe the day before that. Wonderful. Had to load org mode there. Fix this urgently. Yeah, I believe I wrote all this stuff. I just read through the code and was like, what, what am I doing? So I say we just read through the code to kind of follow this as well and see what we need to do. File contents. Does not check or null malloc return value. So malloc, ooh, it doesn't. So we're just gonna assert that contents and say, could not allocate buffer for file contents. That looks good to me. Good enough for me, good enough for me. All right, wonderful. We fixed that. What did I just do? Don't do that. There we go. I always hit the wrong one. I try and check those boxes. Tokens do not need to be linked lists. What did I do? Okay, tokens. It's true. And we don't need to create or free any tokens. Which means that we don't need a count here. We don't need to print tokens ever. We can just print singular tokens. Just like that. That's fine with me. All right. Does this compile? Let's write our compile command. Strima. Fun compiler, why not? Uh, build. Alrighty. Looks like there's a token dot next we can get rid of. That should be it in the entire, the entire thing. Alrighty. Did not mean to that. Alt-Tab. Cool, it runs. So now we can alter this command and say, could you also please run the executable that's generated on example? Perfect. We now generate our compiler using CMake, an executable. We compile our C source code into an executable called the funk, and then we pass a path to the example uh, file, which if we take a look at that, alrighty, 
So we are parsing this example file into this terrible AST. Uh, so we can try and do a little bit better on that. Um, let's see. So let's write simple. I'm just going to steal this first line. Let's try that. Let's call that simple. Right? So... And then we can alter this. That is much simpler. Wonderful. So now we need some way to have an operator recognized, I believe. Yes, yeah, so kind of comes down to here. We should figure out, okay, there's also a to-do here. Check for unary operators. So we have to check for unary prefix operators that at the parsing level, because if, for example, we dereference a pointer, I don't know if this is the syntax we'll use, but if we dereference a pointer, we're going to parse this first, which means that we will need. Yeah. We'll need to do that. Okay. Sorry, I'm very tired today, but we will get going. I'm sure I had more in the list to do. We did that. Zero out given token pointer using memset when lexing. Yeah, that's... I don't think we need to do that. I think I may have just been off my rocker. I probably wrote that and then wrote get rid of the thing because if we take a look, there's not actually... So if token is a valid pointer, we set its beginning and we set its end, so there's no real need to mem set it to zero. I think that's fine. We do have some errors here though, look at this, result. Is that in, is that in here? So I think that's wrong. Okay. Okay, so we get rid of working node completely. Let's just do that and see what happens. Apparently we don't need it. This we can just use result, right? We don't need the token of the integer, we need the node. Left hand side integer, sure, why not? And then copy, just say that, can we do equals here? I don't see why we can't do that. Sure. It's the me. Ahoy, first time chat. So good to see you. How's it going, v me? How are you on this, uh, during this stream? I don't know, is it afternoon for you, morning? Personally, I just woke up. I would consider it morning. But I did wake up from a nap. Writing C compiler in C? Uh, nearly. I just, uh, I woke up one morning and wanted to write a compiler. We take a look at the readme. I don't really have a plan. I just want to make a compiler. It sounds fun. So we're going to write it in C with no dependencies. But it's actually going to compile 
a language that looks something like this, which we just came up with on stream, I think two days ago. And uh, it is a lot like C, but it's also kind of inspired by uh, like common lisps type system with the colons. There's a lot of stuff. Looks Go-like. Yeah, sort of. And the plan is to have every file be like a top-level script. So you can call foo here, and it'll get evaluated. Kind of like Python. We're not, th we're not there yet. We're still just working on the internals. Thank you, my guy. Or girl, my person, my Vimi. All right. So we have left-hand side integer. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, here is the emote Vimi just put in chat. It's pretty wonderful. <laughs> it's three emotes linked together. That's very cool. Thank you, my guy. That was awesome. <laughs> hey, yo. Knocked something over on my desk. Hopefully that wasn't too loud for you. So look ahead for binary ops that include integers. Also, did we do everything in our little to do? Get rid of root node allocation. Oh, yes, we don't need that. Found node working node. This would be intermediate node. My C is so rusty, I probably won't be able to live without smart pointers nowadays. Oof. <laughs> You've been writing in some C++? Or, uh, or just rest with boxes and stuff. C++. Nice. I like C++ a lot. Although I, I think I have a, a flawed view because the C++ I wrote in mainly was for my OS. And that's in a very bare bones C++ with no standard library. So there's not even like smart pointers. I'd have to write that myself still. But it is nice to have like object oriented programming. Being able to put members within structures. You can still do object-oriented ori programming in C, like with these environments and stuff, but you just have to write the API yourself. I don't know, Rust is cool, but I went with Go because of concurrency, and I CBA to learn Rust just for fun. Nice. I don't like Rust at all. I don't feel like I can write uh, software efficiently in it, but I like being low-level down to the hardware, being able to know what's going on on the computer itself, what the CPU registers are doing. Rust is not like that. It's very much an abstraction on top of that. Hence unsafe blocks. Because when I write Rust, I just end up writing C code. <laughs> and I'm like, this doesn't work. Assembly guy. Yeah, I'm an assembly guy. I wrote a lot of assembly. I, I wrote a, a man of culture. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I actually wrote like a, a stack-based programming language that compiles to assembly in multiple different uh, assembly flavors like GAS and NASM, so Intel and AT&T syntax. I know I had to learn them both. That's available on my GitHub actually, Korth. If you wanna check that out. I think that's written in C++ too. It's probably terrible C++. It was like how I learned C++ was I wrote that. So it feels a little, uh, a little young. All right. So I think we need to change up parse expression is what it's looking like. 
Yeah, we just need to return the end and actually set that. So when do we update that? Ooh, first time chat from Lord Mate, Lord M M Z T E. Hey there, how's it going? Vimi says, ooh, I'm a follow ya. <laughs> I'd really appreciate that, Vimi. Thank you so much, guys. If, uh, if you would also prefer, there's a Discord down below where I actually make announcements every time I go live. I can show you that. So every time I go live, I make an announcement here, and you can get uh, notifications like all these other people whenever I go live. It's great. There's also a YouTube where I upload all my VODs if you want to subscribe there. Okay, okay, we kind of have a lot to do. But, uh, that's Lex. I need to change parse expression. Let's do contents iterator so we don't screw up our free down below. It's surely not Vim or NeoVim. Are you an Emacs user? Great job, Vimi. I'm, I'm suspecting by your name you're a Vim guy. Or gal. Or person. I, and I, this is Emacs, to answer your question. Yes. I am an Emacs user. <laughs> Great to find some glorious C on Twitch. So what kind of language are you going for? I don't really know. It's kind of going to be like Python, where like there's top-level expressions that are allowed. So you're going to be able to call like uh, functions like this and they'll get executed, but it's going to be compiled. All hail mighty C. Yes. <laughs> Vimi knows what's up. But uh, it's a language that looks something like this to answer your question. I don't really have a plan further than that. I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm winging it. So this would parse a single expression. That's not really helpful. Yes. I believe like that. So now expression will contain our parsed expression. And we'll just do that until, okay, we should probably do this. Seems like my internet just isn't having it. There's unfortunately only 1080p available for your stream. You do low level professionally too. Okay, I'll, I'll answer one at a time. Lord MZTE, I'm really sorry about that. It may be just because I started streaming recently like within the past 15 minutes, it may have to do some transcoding or processing or whatever. Or Twitch just doesn't care enough about me to do any transpiling for people. I'm really sorry about that. If you want, you can hit the Discord down below and be notified when I go live next, see if it works then, if you are enjoying what you see and would like to see more of it. Uh, Vme asks, uh, you do low level professionally too? I do not. This is the most professional I get, what you are seeing right now as far as coding goes. I do it all as a hobby. I'm self-taught. So, if contents iterator is equal to the one we got last time, then we're just looping and we don't want to do that. So, we will break here. I think that can just be a single line. I don't I think that needs to be more complicated than that. I think I can just call print error like that. Do we still compile? We don't. <laughs> Wonderful. We do compile, but it doesn't run. So we're, oh, I know why. 
So parse expression is never actually setting this end pointer. So it's kind of confusing. When do we set this end pointer? Let's see if it, I mentioned it in my read through yesterday. Nope. So we effectively did that. Okay, we can get rid of integer t. That's a good idea. Because we have to use specific things anyway. Feel the levels of abstraction. Compiling compiler with a compiler. Oh! <laughs> yeah, we could eventually be self-hosted. Because I eventually want to do C interop. Because I know how to do that uh, in assembly. So we could at least compile into assembly and have C interop. Which means that we could call the C library, which means we could have built-ins into the language for like opening files and stuff like that, which would be fun. Just link with the C library. We'll get there. We'll get there with time. We may never get there because this is just for fun, but we'll try and get there with time. Man, we are really at the starting of our parsing. This is not uh, not a mature parser at all. We gotta start splitting this up into multiple files for some organization. Making sense. All right. So effectively, Also, we gotta, there's a, I just realized, there's so much to do in this code, I just wrote it. Um, I wish my C was better. Writing modules for Minix was so much fun, I wish I could get back to it. Have you heard of Zig? I have heard of Zig. That's uh, the language by Andrew Kelly, right? He made it in like 2015. But yeah, I've heard of Zig. We could uh, we could even learn that on stream. Sorry for just going silent there. I had to deal with something on my phone. All right, so that's what I was gonna write to do. We have to check that The end lines up with the end of the token. I think we can just do that. We're going to have to do a stack allocation. So we're going to have end, which is going to equal, I guess, null at the beginning. It doesn't really matter. We can put the address of end, and we can say, If end does not equal token end, we have to return zero. Uh, yes, it's my favorite right now. Awesome. <laughs> you must be talking about the zig stuff. That's awesome. If you are liking what you see, we could always uh, hit a follow. That way you get notified next time I go live or go to the Discord down below. I'm, I make announcements every time I go live on there. And you can talk to the other people, make friends. And me, you can message me. If you like C, you'll really love it. Yeah, that's what I heard about Zig. It's supposed to be like C, but better. Because he wrote a C compiler then said, ah, I think I can make it. I'm, I think I can change a few things from the C standard and make it cool. But yeah, that's definitely something to check out. We should uh, come up with an idea, something to write in Zig, a program.
and then we'll learn Zig together on stream. So if there's stuff after an integer, we now won't parse it as an integer, which I think will help. Did not mean to do that. Okay, I think we did all of this stuff. Yeah, that's kind of just thoughts. So I will just say that all that is done. Perfect. Alrighty, alrighty. Very basic, very basic. Does it still compile? Yes, and it still fails to run. Wonderful. So we're going to get a list of expressions here. So let's, what if we print each expression? We get no output. That's a very interesting one. Hey, V me and Lord MZTE, both of you followed at the same time. I got the two notifications at once. That's incredible. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the follow. Follows from both of you. V me and Lord MZTE. Lenser OS looks interesting. I feel like it can be wrapped into Docker using Qemu Docker image as base. I mean, yeah, it runs within Qemu entirely. So if you can configure Qemu on the command line through Docker, then absolutely, it's doable. I don't actually use Docker or know uh, how to use it, but if you do, it'd be sweet if you want to make a pull request to the to the, make sure you use not the main branch, the development branch that's named like some random thing I'm working on right now. By the way, I'd really appreciate it if you could stream in 720p. It probably wouldn't affect the quality that much as it's just text and it'll allow me to watch without constant buffering. I know how you feel, Lord MZTE. Is there any way I can uh, stream at like two resolutions and have it available for you in 720p as well? If anybody knows how to do that, that would be great. Because I like uh, 1080p 60fps, just so, you, just so that the actual VODs are 1080p 60fps. And then they go up on YouTube as that. And on YouTube, 1080p 60fps videos get a much higher bit rate than, uh, than 720p 60fps videos. So they actually look much better. I know it doesn't matter for just text, but I am a, I'm a stickler. I really appreciate you, though. I appreciate you watching. Hello. Hey, a first-time chat from a new person. Hello, Eternal Wild Fox. How are you? It's so good to see you. Thank you for dropping into the stream. How are you doing? Doing okay. Nice. That's about how I'm doing. Days kind of just go by. What about you? Yeah. Oh, about the same. I'm okay. I had a morning. I designed the uh, logo for this channel this morning, so hopefully that's not too bad. I made the donate button down below. I don't think this channel has good odds. Hey, Lord MZTE. Be nice. Not gonna be nice. Don't be here. Come on now. Lots of work making a compiler. Exactly. We've got a lot of streams to go. But nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh, I mean, I've made an OS. I, I can't imagine a compiler is harder than an OS. It took me four months to make an OS, so hopefully it'll be less than that for the compiler is where I, my brain is at. And the, the AI bot that we made previously, it only took me like three days. I was hoping it would take me a lot longer. <laughs> It didn't. I, I, brew, I breezed through that one, so we're going for a bit of a harder one. I don't think so, unfortunately. Okay. Why are you being so mean, Lord MZTE? What's going on? It seems like your messages aren't trying to uplift and be positive. Why should I allow them in my channel? 
Is everything going okay with you? All Night DC will make it great. See, Vimi has the right idea. <laughs> Eternal Wild Fox. Mine first assembler. Compiler will be based on chip 8, virtual CPU. Not sure yet in which programming language. That's awesome. So you're going to uh, create an assembler, it sounds like, uh, as well as a compiler. That's a lot of work. You got to learn the machine code. But if you're using only a chip 8, sounds like an 8-bit CPU. Yes. Awesome. That's really cool. I'll have to follow your project. Is it going to be open source? I would love to have it on my machine. Chip 8 is virtual. It only has 32 opcodes. Is it 8-bit? What, uh, what's the architecture? Like, uh, is it a stack-based Turing machine, like usual? Is it a Van Hit? Like, oh, uh, what's the other one? <laughs> Anyone of you guys got a chance to play around with that sweet Risk Five single board? We do not. At least not me. Oh man. Okay, I gotta stop just reading chat and actually do work. Sorry, guys. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, so we can parse a singular integer. That's great and all. We need to check for unary prefix operators. We need to check for binary operators. We need to check for variable stuff. A variable <laughs> in the environment. Attempt to pattern match if it's an access, an assignment, a declaration, or a declaration with initialization. Can there be a top level access in the parser? I don't actually know. I have to go check in the specs. That's all good. Wow, so once you got the compiler running, you've achieved Terry Davis levels of greatness. <laughs> My god, don't compare me to a god like Terry Davis. He's amazing. But the chip 8 also needs a, an emulator, so it is a nice project. Nice. So you kind of found a virtual machine that has no uh, code that can run on it, really. So you're going to write an, a compiler and an assembler. That's really cool. I'm excited. Be sure to, you can link your GitHub or whatever you use, Codeberg, GitLab, GitHub, Bitbucket. If you use any of those, you can link to yours and I'll follow you. Because I am interested in that project if it is open source. So I think we should check the environment, like we're saying here, to check for operators. It just means that we have to allow for... We have to make the API to create them, which is kind of fine. I still have to start. It might be open source. Nice. In case you didn't notice, I'm a very open source guy. <laughs> I'm into everything being very transparent. Am I the only weirdo who goes self-hosted repositories? Absolutely not. If I could, uh... Honestly, like, if I had regular income, I would buy a Raspberry Pi, and I'd run, like, an instance of Codeberg on my local Linux machine, effectively. And then I would host, I would add multiple remotes. Because, like, my text editor is on GitHub and Codeberg. I always like to do multiple stuff for what's important. The OS is as well. But yeah, that would be so cool to me, to, like, set up a Raspberry Pi, run a little git t instance. I've got my own git server too. Nice, Lord MZTE. That's really cool. But question, which CPU are you going to target for the compiler? X8664. For uh and we're gonna for C and Taraf, we're gonna support Windows and Linux. But we're going to go to x86-64. At first, we can always port it to something else. Okay, let's see. I am not making progress. It is fine. Progress is not the definition of happiness, right? <laughs> we can be happy without making progress, even if we just stare at the code all day. 
at least we understand more. So we're effectively probably going to need an operator node type. Writing C for M1, I don't recommend. Oh Christ. Yeah, I don't I would never want to write C for M1. Lord MZTE says, I'm just listening to the stream now. My internet isn't good enough for video. That is all good. Hopefully I'll try and uh notate and dictate what I say more. That way the uh people who are audio only or video only have a little bit of an easier time. I'll do my best. Is that what you do, Vimi? Do you uh, code professionally at all? It sounds like you're in the industry based on your knowledge and what you talk about. We're gonna need some operator type, are we not? So a node, yeah, I'm just gonna draw this. So I'm just gonna draw it here, I guess. Oh, hey, I kind of already drew it, but not uh, a good one. So let's say we have a integer equals zero. Let's do 420 because we like to blaze it. Although M1 and M2 are beasts, unfortunately not a lot of projects adapt, adapt their stuff for ARM. I do DevOps professionally nowadays. Nice. That's really cool. Yeah, I think if a new platform is more efficient, but it requires code written in a different way, I don't think it's really that useful. The idea, like Linux has the idea with like never break user space. I think that's a little too far. I think you can break user space in some ways over time, but I think Linux has it great that even code you wrote 20 years ago can still run. Like that's so valuable both for businesses and for personal use. Like if you wrote a compiler when you were 20 and now you're 40 years old and want to show somebody, you can still do it on Linux. It works. Whereas on Windows, if you wrote code specific for Windows, that code probably doesn't work anymore. And Windows is probably on Windows 100 or <laughs> something else. So you build your own OS. Nice. I, uh, I am working on an OS. This isn't the OS I'm using, just to be clear. The OS I'm using is Windows because... A lot of my files from my childhood are in NTFS file systems, and I don't have the money to get a hard drive, which means I could then transfer it into a new hard drive and have backups, and then I could transfer to Linux with one of the hard drives and have the other one backed up. Because switching to NTFS on Linux, there's all uh, you have to like convert to ext4, and I, I that kind of makes me uh, nervous. I'm like, oh, <laughs> my data. But yeah, so I'm just waiting until I can get an actual backup. And then uh, hopefully I can run uh, some Linux-based uh, open source OS is what I would really prefer. No backups equals spicy life. Yeah, that's what I'm living right now. That's where we're at. So what nodes would this be broken into? Ideally, we'd have a program has a list of children. Is the OS open source? Yeah, you can uh, check out the GitHub link down below or Codeberg. And if you look at the license for the OS, it's under the GNU public license version three that was written in like 2008. But it's a pretty uh, open source license. It's approved by OSI and stuff. It's made by the Free Software Foundation. So I would say it's free and open source. As long as well as this code we're working on now under the MIT license. Same with the text editor. It's on GitHub and actually it's quite nicely documented. Thank you, Vimi. I really appreciate that. I, uh, I take a lot of care to write good build instructions because I sometimes I have a really hard time building programs when I'm trying to run them from GitHub. And I'm like, it would be great if there were some better instructions. So I, I try and write those better instructions. So we would have ideally something like a variable declaration with assignment. So this would be like 
initialized. Sure. And there's only one of these. And then its children are going to be a regular variable declaration, I presume. Because I also have books on how to program an OS. Never started with so. <laughs> That's awesome. Feel free to uh, take a look at Lenser OS and see how it's put together, if that helps you at all. It's not structured well. I wouldn't say it's like a tutorial. I just got it working. And it's there's a lot of bugs, I guarantee you. But it's fun to work that low level with the hardware. We have five people watching at once, according to my little Twitch number. That's so much fun. Thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in. We're just building our silly compiler. We're not even coding. I'm just trying to figure out what our AST will look like. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, be sure to hit that follow if you want to be notified when I go live. And also, there's a Discord down below, which we actually make an announcement every time we go live, so you can get a, a notification wherever you are. Because Twitch isn't always that... Uh, I don't know what to say. Specific or that consistent? That's the one. All right, now I got some chats to catch up on. This would be an integer with a value of 420. Uh, Lord MZTE asks, are you using some framework? Or are you writing everything from scratch? I'm guessing it can't be LLVM because then you'd have to write C bindings first. We are writing everything from scratch. That's how we do things around here generally. We use no libraries if we can. Eternal Wildfox, does it support networking also? There is currently not a network driver, but that is not something that is hard to do. I can write a network driver for like the E1000 as soon as we have uh, some programs or some ideas to run some programs. And uh, we're basically still, I'm working on the init process, the Linux init process, that process. I'm working on that right now. And it's kind of tough because it has to launch all the other processes. So uh, it's got to work with like multi-processing and it's a little complicated, but that's what I'm working on now. But yeah, so Lord MZTE, everything is from scratch. Vimi said, I started by writing modules for Minix. Really recommend it. Helps to understand how OS works and codebase isn't gigantic like Linux kernel. Exactly. It, looking at the Linux kernel is very overwhelming, but it's really, they just repeat themselves a lot. There's not actually a lot of pieces there if you break it down to its abstract pieces. There's just a lot of duplicate pieces, like here's one for ARM, here's one for ARM64, here's one for RISC-V, here's one for RISC-V64, here's one for, and it just keeps going, and it's like, oh god. But it, it is very intimidating. The Linux kernel... I did not learn from that very much at all. Um, Eternal Wild Fox says, nice. Probably about the networking answer that we can support some uh, basic networking cards very soon. It would just require probably a week's worth of writing a driver, which really in OS terms is not that much work. Vimi, I feel like you will appreciate DWM and other suckless stuff when, if you migrate to Linux. I don't know what either of those words are. Is that a window manager? The D window manager or something? What architectures will your compiler support? Any that people want to write. It's open source, right? So I'm going to make it easy to just uh, contribute yourself if you want a specific architecture. So this variable declaration is going to have to have like a symbol type or something, which is going to be A. And then it's going to have another child, which would refer to its type. Do we want to do type then symbol? That might be the way to go. Yeah, let's try that. I know that's not how they appear in the source code, but I think in the AST that would be better. DW, DWM is a tiling window manager that is configured in C. You just recompile this the thing with your config. Oh, that's very cool. So you get to compile your own window manager. 
and it's tiling. I'm definitely into tiling window managers. <laughs> I wish Windows had better support. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Mr. Mugame, or Mr. Mugame, is back from yesterday. Thank you so much for coming back. It's great to see you, Mr. Mugame. Mr. Mugame, whatever I should call you. You have to be really dedicated to use suckless tools in DWM. I'm a fairly dedicated person, luckily. <laughs> Okay, so I think we can see how this AST should be formed. We just don't actually have any of the forms for it, so let's just start. Why don't you use a VM? Because they're slow. I do use VMs to test my programs in Linux to make sure they're cross-platform. Uh, VME says, Dynamic Window Manager in Suckless is basically a dev team that writes it, along with other soft software. Really bare bones, under 2,000 lines of, co of C code per program. Nice. I, I always like minimalist stuff. As long as there's, they're not like linking to 10,000 libraries. Minimalist, but linking to 10,000 libraries is like, I call that the JavaScript ap <laughs> approach. And it's like, yeah, there's one line of code, but there's eight libraries that are used in it, and that's too confusing for me. Lord MZT, I'm currently on i3. Nice, i3wm, I've heard of that. I'm hoping to switch to River once Wayland becomes more widely supported. Mr. Mugame, but they make it extremely easy to extend it with your own features. And not Sway? Interesting. I know some of these words. <laughs> I think we can just write de declaration. I don't think we need variable declaration. I don't think anything else will be declared. Well, I guess if we have constants eventually. But it's not an install and go type program. <laughs> I'm wondering if I should document the node types kind of in line here. Like, should I do something like this for each node type? We'll have to think about it. To do. And how they fit in the AST. So. I added a to-do message, think about how to document node types and how they fit in the AST. Because the node has a bunch of types and they're all going to fit together somehow. And the type checker is going to make sure of that, but it'd be nice if there was documentation that the type checker could be based on and refer to. WSL2 is quite good if you are stuck with Windows. Yeah, at the beginning of the OS development, WSL was a giant help until I wrote my own create GPT program. I had to use a F disk or F parted or G parted or something. I develop on VMs all the time. It's fine even being used to and on a 240 hertz monitor. Nice. Yeah, I just found that Emacs doesn't run particularly fast in VMs unless I give it like all eight cores, which I technically only have four, but it's hyper threaded because it's an old CPU. It's, it's so bad. Hey, Eternal Wild Fox with the follow. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching, spending your time. So we have different node types. We're going to need a symbol as well. So we're just going to do it. Anything that isn't another literal type becomes a symbol pretty much. There should be no CPU overhead in a VM. <laughs> there should be no violence in the world. I agree with you. <laughs> Lord MZTE. Yeah, and once I make the switch, I'll likely not be going for Sway. I really like how River is looking. It's written in Zig, hee <laughs> hee. I see what you were going for. <laughs> From VME with the Pepe. <laughs> trashed base. 
All right, anything that isn't another literal type becomes a symbol. I think that's correct. Just an integer. Here's an interesting thing. We're going to have unary operator types in the AST and negative numbers. Should they be parsed as an integer with a negative value? Or should we parse them as a unary operator minus with an integer value of 420. There's kind of multiple ways to do this. Just an integer. Good enough for me. I'm using left window manager because it's insanely easy to set up. That definitely helps. Easy to set up window managers are, are much better than hard to set up window managers. I <laughs> will say that. Eternal Wild Fox. I also started a fun project reading the WebSocket protocol two days ago. And now I have a Discord WebSocket gateway bot. Nice. Written in PHP with non-blocking sockets. Nice. It's crazy how people just write off PHP as like an unused old language. It's like, it's actually really great for concurrency and servers. Easier than Qtile and awesome. Sorry, never used it. So just asking. Nice. I like when uh, people in chat talk to each other. I like everybody being nice. We're having a good day. So, PHP 8 is. <laughs> PHP 5 was a disaster, though. I think everything made in the mid 2000s was a disaster, personally. <laughs> I've tried awesome before and it's easier, not as configurable as awesome or DWM, but it has all the features I need. PHP 8 is pretty well. Yeah, it's 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 where it's at. I'm gonna put in my uh, earbuds here. How is everybody doing? I'm having a fun old time reading everybody's messages, making a little progress on the code. I feel like I actually understand what I'm doing. I don't feel like uh, I'm just uh, sitting around doing nothing. Eternal Wild Fox says, I also want to learn Python. Nice. That should be easy for you if you know any other language. Python is not a difficult one. It's kind of like uh, a simplified version of every programming language. If you took Java and then took <laughs> made it a runtime, an interpreter, instead of a virtual machine. That's pretty much Python. PHP is well under my minimal acceptable performance line. Oh, big mister, Lord MZTE. He only uses languages for performance. He never writes anything. <laughs> In a, that's inefficient. Come on, my guy. Every language has a use. There's no need to put them down. PHP is great because it was written in C. <laughs> Hell yeah, Vimy knows what's up. Anything written in C is baller. <laughs> PHP had a B compiler in PHP 7, which was great for performance, but they removed B compiler in PHP 8. I don't think PHP should be for performance. It's more for concurrency and uh, server tasks. It's like how Perl it's not going to be like the most efficient. It's just made for regular expressions. <laughs> Python is one of those easy to learn, hard to master, kind of like bash scripting. It's exactly like bash scripting. That's a great way to put it. You can get, you can learn a little bit and get anything you need done. But the more you learn, you, the more you realize, oh, this is a deep bucket. There's a lot of tools here. <laughs> Thank you everybody so much for following. I hope I caught it, but Eternal Wild Fox followed five minutes ago. I really appreciate that. If you uh, want to get notified every time I go live, Twitch doesn't do it every time. They kind of choose based on their algorithm when to tell you. But if you want to be notified every time, you can go ahead and join this Discord. And uh, I make announcements every time I go live, and you'll never miss a stream. Like all these people here. Mr. Mugame, Lord NCTE, thank you for joining the Discord. All of you. 
Python is one of those easy to learn. Okay, I read that. I don't agree with the whole every language has a purpose thing, honestly. Nothing I want to get into, though. Lamau. That's fair. I would say PHP has a great rival. Go is really good at concurrency and has a lot in terms of backend libs, frameworks. Kubernetes. <laughs> you can just say Kubernetes. It has Kubernetes. <laughs> Okay, we gotta figure out how to start making this work. Because we are moving slow, moving slow. So we would like to parse anything that isn't an integer currently and say, hey, we should also ensure it's not to do. Check that it isn't. A binary operator. We should encounter the left side first. Oop, I'm getting wrong. Insert forward. Keep forward. Rather than encounter it at top level. Sure. That will help me in the future. Brainfuck doesn't have a purpose. I would argue, Mr. Mugame, Brainfuck does have a purpose. Because I was interested in Brainfuck just because of its name. So it's like, it's kind of like a TV show that isn't actually good, but it draws a lot of people into the network to watch the other shows on the TV, on the same network. You can find a purpose for every language except for R, Kappa. <laughs> yeah, mathematicians don't deserve programming languages. Screw R. It does. Its purpose is being funny and challenging. <laughs> yeah, Lord MZTE is, knows about it. You you can find a purpose for every language except for R, Kappa. I sure couldn't. Well, maybe you just need to expand your imagination a little bit, Lord MZTE. You can make anything and anything, I promise. People make things that look like people out of, like, dirt and rocks. You should compile the brain fuck, lol. Oh! <laughs> okay, that's going in the to-do. <laughs> uh... At Mr. Mugame, had a great idea. Compile the brain fuck. <laughs> this is just a perfect idea. I don't even know if it's possible. <laughs> I don't even know if it's possible. Perl, good regex. Python, great for data analysis and machine learning. I would argue C is better for that. Kotlin, because Java is just messy and Android has to live. <laughs> I, I wish it was easier to compile to Android. It's it's a whole thing to get the environment and the NDK and the... Blah, blah. For many languages, I've got a situation where there's always a language that does the same thing better. So you're saying, oh, anything you say, I'll just come up with one better. <laughs> That's not so nice, my guy. Come on. And what does better mean? Because better is subjective. So if you're saying there's only one language that is better to you, I would agree. There's probably not a use for every language to you. But there is a use for every language for somebody. I'm not saying I'm going to use every language in every project, right? Just saying that there is a use for them. Unless you think, like, you can write things that people write in javascript for websites if you want to write that in some other language well you can because you can <laughs> there's now WebAssembly. you can compile the WebAssembly, and there's all sorts of things that do that and you can even like take executables and turn them into WebAssembly. it's awesome you can do machine learning in fasm <laughs> it will be fast as sin but should you really waste your life on that kappa no but you could do it machine learning in a in something like c C is pretty good for machine learning, my guy. If you want to check out my uh, YouTube channel or the VODs on the Twitch, they're probably still up. It was recent enough. We wrote an entire AI bot that generates suicidal text uh, from scratch. And we wrote it in C, which is machine learning, because we trained it on a, a data set that we collected in Pascal on stream. That was a lot of fun doing that. I recommend checking those uh, those VODs out. I also recommend going to the Discord down below. How do you like that segue? 
You can get notified every time I go live. Woo! Okay, so we need to parse something. Do this. We can do that. Eventually. For now, we're just going to look for a declaration. So we're going to say, okay, node symbol equals, isn't that the current node? So result, right? But we haven't parsed anything into it. So we need to say, create it. Hey, yo. Let's just say I write my scripts in Zig. You now probably have a decent idea of what sort of person I am. A person that likes Zig? I don't know what you mean. You can script in anything. Bash is like direct to the shell. I wrote a script to gather training data from the push shift API in Pascal. If you want to be the one up guy. <laughs> there's always things you can, there's programming languages you can write things in. I'd say just choosing the best one is more important than choosing one for some reason that isn't important. Whatever makes you, gets you out there in coding, really. Bottom line is one can write anything in anything that is turned complete. Sometimes you want to write something in a year and not a decade. Exactly. Vimi has, has the idea. I prefer writing things in a decade. That's why I write it in C. <laughs> uh. I think that's fine. Align those on the equals. That's fun. So now we create a symbol. We should probably like copy from the token. Let's just see. Okay, yep, still not working. That's wonderful. Oh, we're still not setting end. I'm on a I'm on a real distraction today. So every time we parse something, we need to also capture the end. Which if we parse an integer, we can just go to the end of the token. So parsing an integer end equals the end of the token. Errare humanum est preservare autum diabolicum. Ooh. <laughs> That's probably some Latin that I should know. Always skipped Latin class. <laughs> you and me both, Lord MZTE, you and me both. So the end equals the end. We just have to do that here. Can we just do that every time we lex and not worry about it? We cannot. Alrighty. Never had Latin class, Kappa. <laughs> A man that is mysterious, I promise. So if I just put an exit here, do we get here? We do. So if I put an exit here, we get here. We do not. <laughs> so we should probably return air if it's unrecognized. In which case we'll get here. Which if it's none. Okay, so this is start end. And I'm basically saying the source we get 
is the beginning of the token. The end, we start lexing from there so we can loop. Interesting. Google Translate says to err is human, but to persist is diabolical. Exactly. Wanting to do things in the hardest way, just to just because. That's human. <laughs> it's true human. All right, let's try and figure out why it's so upset. Challenge attempt. Okay. I wish uh, debugging on Windows didn't require Visual Studio so much. The more languages one know, the more brain fucked one is. So here I am. <laughs> Lord MZTE says true. All right. So we have parsed an expression. Whenever I learn a new language, I realize how bad the previous one actually is. I don't. I just figure out how to do the same things, <laughs> honestly. Like, how do you do a for loop? How do you do a while loop? How do you do a conditional branch? How do you do variable access? How do you do very function calls? And then it's like, okay, I can, I, I got all my tools now. My toolbox is full, I can code. So that's because you never learned C one C. I don't know what that is, to be honest. <laughs> so you should be able to loop over these tokens till we get an error. Token length is zero break. Ah, we probably have to wait till after that. Nope. Okay. Well, you know, like when I learned Zig, I realized how inefficient Rust is because it pretends allocations don't exist, which C honestly isn't that much better at. I, what you said just makes no sense. I think you're saying it's easier in Zig to understand what memory allocation model you're using for your objects. And you can say it more explicitly so you could have like an arena allocator set up easier than you do in C. But C is just not meant to be a language for you to use. It's meant to be a language that can do anything on a given system. if that makes sense. So why doesn't this work? So let's say we parse some stuff. We get unrecognized token A and we can return. C is meant for gods. <laughs> Lamau. Zig needs an allocator object to allocate things. Zig will never do any allocations behind your back. C and Rust both do that. No, they don't. What? Okay, what is allocated behind your back in C? I don't like Rust. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. All the box stuff, I hate. Universe is written in C, and deja vu happens when universe has small seg vaults. <laughs> V me, you are the best. Thank you so much for bringing your positivity to today's stream. I really appreciate it. It's made me laugh a lot. Just your presence has. I really appreciate it. I appreciate everyone, but you especially. You've been great today. So we parse, and then we set this contents iterator within parse expression. And we set it to the end. Doesn't sound too crazy. 
So then, ideally, let's just put a size T like uh, maximum. Sure. So did we hit maximum? So I should probably do something like this. Just to protect against infinite loops. So unknown, none. That's fine. Alrighty, so it runs now, but is it getting to the end? Plenty of libc functions may or may not call malloc. It's just something that presents an uncontrollable slowdown, because you simply cannot control what gets to allocate and what allocator is used. There's also no real way to use any allocator except malloc. What? Okay, so libc functions aren't called for you. You call the libc function. So if you don't know what the libc function does, that's kind of on you. You're calling it. You're using a function you don't know how to use. Like, you can just look it up. Let's do it together. You can look up, like, let's say str pointer break, string pointer break, right? And then you can go to, like, they even have nicely formatted websites, and you can see they have examples, right? And uh, you can read all these different documentations and read how they're implemented, what they're meant to do. It'll tell you if it allocates things. So I promise nothing happens behind your back unless it's on you and you don't know what you're using. Libc is just that, a library. You don't really have to use it, strictly speaking. Exactly. Second of all, malloc is not the only way to allocate memory. There's actually the compiler uses like underscore alloc a, I believe. See? You can use alloc a, which is it, it's it, it's the compiler. So you can just you can use so many things. There's no ab there's absolutely no way to know what uses the heap and to control that. There absolutely is. Like, there's not that many that use the heap. I can tell you right now, in string.h, I'm pretty sure strdoop uses the heap, right? Does anything else? Maybe strcat? It'll tell you if it does, I promise. See, strdoop isn't even here. Amazing. C and C++ are very powerful. But I promise, it doesn't do anything behind your back. It'll tell you. See, this doesn't allocate to any memory. It just appends two strings. You can absolutely just understand, like, string error. I don't think it allocates anything. Yeah. It says it returns a pointer to a statically allocated string, so it doesn't allocate anything. Str talk. No? So I don't know. If you think that there's a lot of functions you're using that are using the heap, I think that's on you, my guy. I, libc is pretty all right, but it breaks down if you use any C library that uses the heap somewhere. Then don't use them, my guy. You don't have to use C like that. You can't bash on C for how you use C, <laughs> right? C is fine. You know, I don't use any libraries to make this compiler. The only libraries I use for uh, my text editor, even, are just SDL, the graphical backend. I use the game engine, because that's actually the best way to do it. Why did this stop working, by the way? Did I break something with this? No. I'm just an idiot. It's usually how it goes. Just use go. <laughs> exactly.
So we are getting the contents of a file at a path. And if it exists, we are parsing. Okay. How many can we do? Can we do three? <laughs> No, so there's an error probably deeper down. We can do one. Let's say I'm writing some sort of program that makes use of a C library, for example, libcurl. There's no way of making libcurl use my own custom allocator, and I don't know where it allocates either, because I'm not insane enough to read all the code. This means the only solution to this is to rewrite literally everything that calls malloc, which is just ridiculous. Why? Why do you think that you know better how to allocate memory for the library? Doesn't the library know how to allocate memory for itself the best? It's kind of how these things work. Because if in Zig you can allocate, choose how the allocations work, you could just choose the wrong one and it would be super inefficient. So there's like it's kind of a catch-22. You have to know exactly what, like what you're saying. You'd have to read all the code of the library and understand which allocator to use and which one would be the most efficient. And also, there may not be one allocator. There may be like eight different allocators because they may allocate uh, things in like different objects with different lifetimes, right? I do see what you're saying, but I think it's kind of a flawed argument because the opposite also has the same. What did I just do? So the opposite also has the same implication where to use your own custom allocator, you have to understand exactly what the library does and where it allocates. Otherwise, you're just going to choose an inefficient one and not actually make anything better by choosing your own, right? It can't. It depends on the use case. For example, if I know I'll be only allocating small amounts of data, I might not. I want. <laughs> I might want to not use the actual heap at all, and instead use an allocator that allocs in an array in the stack. You can do that in C. Because every time you get an allocated object from your library, like let's say your libcurl fancy function, right? You can call it. And it returns some object, a pointer to it, because it's heap allocated is what you're complaining about. Then you can just free it after storing it in your thing, in your custom allocated data structure, okay? Or whatever. You see how that could work? And you could write everywhere it and it allocates memory and you return a pointer, you go, oh, okay, we'll store this in my data structure, my custom one. You can do the same thing in C. It's really not different, right? It's kind of what higher level programming is all about. I might not know want to do all what libcurl does, so I rely on people who wrote it. I am sure they are smart enough to do it, as it should be done, and I know for a fact they know how to do it better than I, or 99% of programmers would do it. V me, I think you have the idea exactly right. Lord MZTE, that's no good. Then I still get massive performance losses from doing a heap allocation and a free. No, you don't. <laughs> what are what show me your measured performance losses losses from doing heap allocations and C, I promise. You won't get much. Getting rid of that is the end goal, after all. Why? Why is getting rid of heap usage the goal? That doesn't make any sense to me. The stack is too small for some things. Just use the heap. It's not a big deal. Do you have programs that run too slow? What program runs too slow that you want to fix? You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't think there's actual use cases for what you're saying. Malik and Free are actually very slow. One of the major slowdowns in C. Sure. I think if maybe you're, you're writing 
the wrong <laughs> you're allocating memory the wrong way like we allocate each node itself like you can make a linked list with a million a million different objects and all heap allocate each one and you can do that in like a 200 milliseconds what is too slow about malik and free how are they very slow for you how have you used them and the performance has been too slow because i think we could call malik a million times and free a million times and i don't think it would even like really matter <laughs> honestly heap usage is avoidable in some cases and it's a sensible optimization to move some things to the stack i disagree i think it's a sensible optimization to move things to registers from the stack i don't think it makes sense to move stuff from the heap to the stack stack is too small for some things exactly vimi you got it too sometimes you can't predict the heap size that you would need because those damn users tend to input stuffs <laughs> Be me, you exactly, you have it. You use the malik and free. <laughs> How do you know? There's no way to know some things in programming. It's a future-based thing. So having the heap allows you to have a program that allocates a specific amount of memory, but can also dynamically allocate memory for when it needs it. I don't know. I think the argument that malik and free are inherently bad is kind of flawed. Like, you can write your own malloc and free. It's not that hard. So if you're complaining about that, just write your own. And if you don't want to write your own because it's too complicated, then why do you want to think about which allocator to use in Zig and choose which one? I'm not saying that's a bad feature. I'm just saying that arguing it's better than malloc and free is kind of weird. And saying it's more efficient is probably a little odd. So I don't think it's malloc and free or inefficient by any means. I'm sure if you compare it to the stack, it's inefficient, but you can't do things on the stack that you use the heap for. And if you're using the heap for things you do on the stack, I think that's a problem on you as the programmer. Like, why would you just allocate things on the heap for no reason? You know what I mean? I don't know. I just don't see your argument at all. I'm a little, I'm a little, remember that really old meme with like that old lady with just W-A-T? I kind of look like that right now. <laughs> well, I'm just making myself laugh here. Okay. Hopefully we have a symbol. We now need to, hey, we have to do a heap allocation. You're going to love this. So I think we're just going to allocate string span let's see we have a length right we already get this we did to check for zero so we can just do this and say Of course, you also wouldn't want to move everything to the stack, but some things might make sense. A more practical example would be something like a parser. If I want to parse some data, which is, for example, JSON, I'll check the length of the data first, and then I'll call malloc once to get an array of the size of the raw input, and I'll pass parsing the allocator that allocates in this array, because it's guaranteed that it will be big enough. This would provide a performance increase since I'm only using the heap once instead of once per deserialized value. The list for use cases really goes on and on. That's what we're saying, my guy. I think we're agreeing now. Oh man, sorry about the cat noise. So this is going to be symbol string, sure. We're just gonna assert it, because why not? Program and CCCC, program and CCC pointers, assembly, manage your memory, malloc and free. <laughs> Is that a song? That's a great song, my guy. Sure, something like that. Oh, 
probably just mem copy into simple string from current token top beginning and token length bytes <laughs> that's an amazing song thank you so much for sharing that we should make it an actual song i can picture like a daft punk electro edm type of thing happening I'll just leave this here. Is it already a song? Okay, I'm gonna click it. <laughs> it's already a song. I also heard Libc's allocator is pretty slow in some cases compared to other heap allocators. I don't have any data on that though. You can write your own, so if you don't like Libc's, just write your own, my guy. Or just, like you said, use it once, get a big array, and write your own allocator that allocates within that array. You can write whatever type of thing you want. Oh, I see. So the, uh, the song you sent is to the tune of the Disney movie, the, the mermaid, little, the little mermaid or whatever. Program in C, program in C, pointers assembly, manage your memory, malacan <laughs> That's pretty good. It's a good parody. I'm just trying to make sure. I don't think this is too bad. We now have a string in our AST, which means that when we free a node, we should say... if root.type sure I don't need to do that no symbol p oh I probably didn't write that Node is like a B tree, or do I miss the point now? You're exactly right. Node is a lot like a binary tree. Uh, if it helps you, we can take a look at some some pictures I drew. <laughs> right? So let's say that, like, these aren't actual uh, node types, but let's say we have a an AST that needs to look like this. The problem is one node may have three children so it can't be a binary tree if you feel me if you feel like libc allocator is inefficient you can just redefine it go with the same api and compile libraries with your custom allocator exactly vimi has the idea so yeah eternal wild fox a node is kind of like a b tree but it's more than a binary tree it has any amount of children so each node can have any amount of children. And each child is obviously can have its own children. So it's an, it's an unrestricted binary tree. It can be a ternary tree or a, a quaternarian tree or a quintarian tree. That's a cool one, quintarian. That sounds like a, an alien. Right, and that's just implemented with two pointers. So we have a, a node pointer to children and then a node pointer to the next child. So it's just a tree. <laughs> Vimi knows what's up. But we, uh, the first child is pointed to with children. So this symbol here is the, sim is the children pointer. An enary tree. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, Lord MZT. An enary tree. So this uh, symbol right here is kind of like the children pointer, and then this is the next child pointer. So you can see how a single node can have children and next child can store the rest, while children can store the children for the actual child. It's a little confusing, but I think it makes sense. 
And here is how we plan to, for example, parse this variable declaration and assignment with an, initializ an initialization. We're going to put the expression on the right side, uh, just as the second child. The first child will be a variable declaration node, just this, which will also be reused in function declarations, for example. And then we can also, I'm thinking about implementing like a list uh, node type so that it will just store children so that a function declaration could have three children, but one of them is a list of arguments or something like that. But yeah, that's, it's basically a binary tree, but a little bit more flexible. So if we need to implement something else, we can. Alrighty, let's continue on. Let's continue on. I did start late today, so I may have to uh, end a little early. But uh, it's not going to be a three-hour stream today by any means. I may have to end here at uh, just after three, most likely. So probably half hour, 45 minutes. All right, let's get this text a little smaller and see if we can't make some progress. Okie dokie. Could not allocate memory for a symbol. Symbol string is not. Yes, so that's right. That's right. Look at this. So this ensures that it's not null. But it is the correct type and everything. I think that makes sense. It's good enough for me. So now when we free nodes, symbols also get their symbol freed. Because when we create nodes, symbols get their symbols allocated. Okay, ran once. That's right, we still have this error. Kind of a huge error. It's just to do with this while loop. I think maybe I don't overwrite contents iterator correctly and parse expression. So something to do with this end variable. Right? Because if I never set it, it should be equal to source and we should break out of the loop. But if we lex something and it's not zero length, so I guess if it is zero length, it wouldn't matter. So how do we do this? We're parsing, we lex, which means the current token gets its beginning and end set. So the end of the next token should be the end of the expression, as far as we know, unless we lex more. So maybe this lexing here is going to the top? Nope. Not specifically that. Although it may, so we may want to keep that. Let's think about this. It may be better to do a state machine type thing, where when we parse an integer, we just go into like a state of parsed integer. And then we can check what's next on the top level instead of... That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. We'll see how it goes. This is such a terrible parser. Christ. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I should write better code. Okay. Um, we have a symbol. Hopefully we have a simple string. So... When we get a symbol, I guess we just have to check that it's one of these things. So like that. Because if it's already defined in the environment and it's just a symbol, it's a valid variable access. If there's a an assignment operator following it, it's an assignment, or it can be a declaration if it's, there's a type in between. Okay. Writing parsers is really hard. The state machine tokenizer thing is a really popular approach, but don't take advice from me. I'm really terrible at parsers. Lord MZTE, 
you are correct. It's very popular. But it's a... Uh, I think it's also overused to make, like, tutorial parsers that don't actually parse <laughs> actual languages. Like, they just parse mathematical operations and that's where they stop. They're like, oh yeah, 2 plus 2. Let's write a parser that can calculate, like, PEMDAS using factors and terms. And it's like, well, yeah, but do you ever actually need to do that? Like, you can build this stuff into your language. Writing parsers is really hard. Eternal Wild Fox, you are correct. That's why we're going to be here a while. <laughs> and we won't actually make much progress. It'll be mostly abstract thinking. Going, what, what shape is this tree? Why is it going wrong? And then vme, we have... Anyone tried sea lion? Maybe it's just me being a hoarder of editor IDE configs, but I find it relaxing to sometimes jump into a huge IDE and enjoy the features. Kind of like a resort where everything is paid for up front. Nice, I get what you're saying. I, uh, I haven't used sea lion because it's paid, right? It's not free. I tend not to pay for things <laughs> when I cannot do that. Because uh, world's, the world's rough out there. A loaf of bread is like six dollars. <laughs> or more. Or more. So we can get a symbol. I looked at the zig parser before. I looked at the tokenizer, which is the state machine thing. So I thought, ah, oh, that's easy. Then I looked at the AST generator and promptly ran away at the 10,000 <laughs> 10, line of code file. Yeah, ASTs tend to be slightly more complicated. But, uh, oh, did you hear my stomach there? I'm hungry. I got to eat that loaf of bread I paid for. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. Lexing and tokenizing is like, that's a breeze. Like, I'm pretty sure our lexing function is like, yeah, it's like 20 lines. Less than, right? It's literally 15 lines. So, lexing, there's also great library, <laughs> great functions in the C library. I just like half coughed. Did you hear that? Slightly. <laughs> but yeah, lexing is, is easy. You can use like very basic C library functions and just lex tokens, uh, stream tokens. It's it's very easy to do it and it's efficient. ASTs is where stuff like this comes into play, and you got to start creating, <laughs> creating some data structures. You know what I mean? It gets a slightly more complicated, as Lord MZTE points out. <laughs> uh. So we can allocate symbols. Also, we should heap allocate. We need to heap allocate this. Ooh. Heap allocate expression. So that we can free it properly. Sure. Or we could just have a special, like, free node contents. But I don't think that's going to be that worth it. All right, continuing our abstract thought. What are we doing? We have a symbol. We would like to check if there's a colon after this symbol, ideally. All right, so <laughs> if we get A as a symbol, that would be great. And also, so I think effectively the problem here Oh Christ. I'm just gonna do that. Let's simplify this. We're gonna have to create a program based on the file. So we're going to have to heap allocate. This can be a better to-do message. And this will be... 
create API to heap allocate a program node, as well as add expressions as children. I think that makes sense. Okay. For now, parse a single expression. Perfect. We love when stuff doesn't work. Also, is this this is probably needs a new line? No. We get unrecognized token A, unknown none. What is unknown none? This this falls through. That's the error. But that also means that Excuse me? Node type max does not equal three, it equals seven. How are we not running into these asserts? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know at all. That's kind of confusing. Do I need to cast it? Does anybody know? That's really odd to me. So node type max, we can see the language server at the bottom here says it's seven because it's an enumeration. It's the last enumeration, so it should count upwards. And this asserts that it's equal to three. Which it doesn't, so this should trigger, but it's actually not. That's kind of, that's kind of sucky. Whatever. I don't know why that assert doesn't trigger. Maybe we have to cast the enum value to like something. What is it? It's just an integer, right? Yeah, no, I don't know. That's really odd. I don't know what to do about that. In any case, we have to support some more types here. Symbol. That works for me. We'll do something like this. So that we don't force printf to deal with our null value. Perfect. Okay. Binary operator. This is going to be a to do. Good enough for me. Gonna be a lot of these to do's. I wish it was easier in C to kind of switch up how cases fall through to each other with some different keywords or something. Because it would be great if I could like extend a case. Like I could say uh, no, variable no var decal, right? A variable declaration. And then I could say like extended node type variable declaration initialize and then do this more stuff. And this could like printf just in it because that's all it truly needs to do, but we have to copy this whole thing. Just an opinion. By the way, my Discord PHP code has 300 lines of code, pure, non, or object-oriented programming code. It is nasty. I have to refactor it. It was very experimental code. Yeah, that's generally, getting things done is what I value over just writing correct code. Writing correct code doesn't help anybody. It just makes you feel good about yourself. Getting things done may help people. <laughs> so I would say writing correct code isn't actually that important. Because modern OSs, like, they protect. There's memory mapping. There's virtual memory maps for each program. So it's like, you can't really screw things up <laughs> more than the OS allows you to. Right? Hey yo, just knocking more stuff over. 
Probably got about uh, 10 15 minutes left on the stream, just so you guys know. Unrecognized token unknown. So we're switching on node type. What node types did we not handle? We shouldn't see this ever. To be honest, it does not have comments. Besides, that's bad error handling. That's why it is experimental. That's why, I'm sure. I think... Uh, why yes nice we can understand each other i still don't understand why this assert doesn't trigger but i'll have to look into that to do some tests and also how we're hitting unknown are we printing unknown from somewhere else like this is the only place in the code we print unknown but can we print like the actual value of the node type so we can see what the hell you're doing to us ah uninitialized memory. <laughs> Who is uninitialized memory? Why is uninitialized memory? So, I might write a better code which is more easy to follow and better error handling which might go public. That's a good idea. Releasing things open source is always, I mean, it can't hurt, right? As long as it's a program and you're trying to make it work. Could help somebody, even if it's just helps them learn what not to do or what to do, honestly. Because doing things the exact right way isn't always the right thing to do, honestly. So I don't know if you guys are unknown. Okay. So maybe we never set result. Yeah, that's probably it. We're just going to do this to help ourselves a little bit. That should, yeah, that fixes that. So now we just need to set result to at least the symbol, because why not, right? Sorry, I went away for a sec. What do you mean by error handling? I'll let him answer, I won't answer for him. Well, mine code is pretty straightforward, so it is great learning code, I guess. Exactly. It could help somebody a lot who isn't uh, super proficient, right? They could look at it and go, hey, I kind of understand how this works, and I kind of understand this code, that's cool. I need to build better errors and handling in mine code. There's so many ways to handle errors. It's one of the hardest things to do, but you just have to make sure that you use the same type across all of your code so that your error type can be returned by every function within it. Like for example, our lex function returns this error type and so does our parse expression. That way, when we parse, when we lex, we can just return the error from the lexer directly in the parser which helps a lot. Whenever I hear error handling, my brain says, beware of stack unwinding. Oh God. Writing stack unwinding code is one of the worst things in the world. <laughs> so we should now get a symbol. And we do, we get the symbol A. Wonderful. That's not necessarily what we wanna do. But that does work. So we now have our symbol node. And we would like to check. Okay. For now, I guess we have to lex further. See, we could do a state machine parser, but I think that might be a little too complicated as it grows. I think I'm just going to do kind of specific special forms right now, and we'll 
slowly move those into the language itself. I think that makes sense. So how do I do this? I say lex, make sure it's none, set end. So I just need to do kind of those things here. And I'm looking for a specific thing. And I should say if error does not e I, I, I guess I can just say there that type. I started with Java programming. Try catch is very common in Java. Exceptions are not the way to go. <laughs> just switch to Kotlin. Oh God. Oh wait, I lied. I learned assembly on school to program microcontrollers. Well, that's dope. That's really cool, my guy. Sure. Okay. Now we have our current token. And we would like to just, I guess, check that it, something like that. But yeah, assembly is very cool. I like working really low to the hardware, writing assembly and dealing with all the registers yourself of the CPU. It reminds you that humans haven't actually come that far. It just happens to work. <laughs> so I, I think I use this like this. If I remember correctly. One for success, that's correct. You it is fun. <laughs> yes. Assembly is fun. Exceptions are fine if you're way up to the abstraction ladder. Then you really don't feel the performance hit, but not in lower level stuff. <laughs> it's true. It's not even a performance thing for me. I don't really care about programs performance. On, on, I mean, on some level, I don't care if it takes five seconds or one second. It's still just a small amount of time, right? If it takes five minutes over five seconds, I care. That's a big difference. And every time you iterate the program, it takes a lot longer. It's it's a whole thing. I get that. But I've never found like optimizing programs is actually all that useful. It is fun. But exceptions to me, I just hate how they work because it's not clear which exceptions you should catch. I think it should be easier to catch any exception and then they should all be able to be treated in a similar way similar to how i guess i'm just talking about errors instead of exceptions but yeah i'm not i'm not, a, I'm not an exception person they uh they break my brain and i just don't like thinking about okay so this function may return something that doesn't actually get returned by the function. It's actually an exception that gets triggered and triggers something external. Like, it's so complicated. One against five seconds on a data set of five million records, 50 million records. Five million? There's too many zeros for me to count them. <laughs> so then we should do all this again. This is horrible code. Don't at me, please. Sure. Yeah, we'll do that a bit differently. I think I how it was is fine.
So now we parsed an equals, not an equals, an assignment of a colon. So now we would have to check for a type. We're just going to be very dumb right now. Yes, we are doing this. This is horrible code. Add the comment. Note, please don't look here. <laughs> exactly. It's just, it's not important. No, this is just uh, to make a little bit of progress. Because making progress, even if it's not correct, at least it's progress. So if the string equals an integer, then hey, we parsed a variable declaration. Cool. Most fun in code is bitwise stuff. It can be. Lord MZTE says, I'll be off for today. Has been nice talking to everyone. Thank you for coming out, Lord MZTE. It's been fun. I really appreciate it. We're going to be stopping the stream here soon, so you're not missing too much. But be sure to check out the VODs of the other stuff. Join the Discord. I know you already did. But be sure to talk to people in there anytime. Message me. And uh, thanks for watching. All right. Now that he's gone, what do you really think of him? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Finn equals a character of bytes array at zero. Bit shifted to the right seven and zero. Zero times one, just to be fancy, huh? And zero. RSV1 equals ordinate byte zero, write six. Reserve two equals under bytes, write five. You're just getting the character. Aren't you just getting ones? Don't that just get ones? WebSocket protocol. Oh, nice. That makes more sense. I was like, wait, what? You tickle my bit spot just the right way. Ooh. <laughs> v me, you are hilarious. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, we did it variable vardecle yep the classic setting pointers to null and c of a stack allocated structure okay node type is going to be hey it's a variable declaration look at that Perfect. So we can now just say result is equals this thing on the stack and it will copy. It had to do some testing and calculations to get that code right. <laughs> yeah, that code, uh, it looks like hopefully it's uh, like specified in some specification, I guess is what I'm saying. Hopefully the WebSocket protocol says, here's exactly what you do to get these numbers. But if they don't, it's, uh, that just makes it terrible. Documentation is key. Hey, unrecognized token integer, because we don't return. All right. So now I basically just have to, yes, the WebSocket protocol is defined in an RFC. Nice. I'm sure that's some specification that I should know more about. So we're just going to say var decal. And then we're going to have a type. How do we print the type? Let's see. We're going to have to kind of do this a little custom, right? Because here's the thing. 
the variable declaration should have two children. One is a type and one is a Yeah, we're getting into node creation now. So a child should have, is this gonna work? No, that won't work. It has to be heap allocated, yeah. So we need really the add child API. That would really help us. Do we work on that? Let's work on that and then we'll uh, head out for today. To do Print first child symbol and type of second child ID symbol sure perfect all the to do messages all the to do messages okay add child so I believe all we were, all we need to do, we can say uh, void. I don't think we need to return a failure. We're going to take in, can we do a node type like this? No? Oh, I didn't name the function. That's why it's freaking out. Node add child. Should I take in an existing node and just copy from that? Maybe I'll do that. So I'll do node pointer parent and node pointer child. So then we will say if not parent return or if not new child. So we would like to add a child to the parent. So parent children. A child. So this pointer is a pointer within the node structure. Hopefully to another node, but if not, we also need to handle that. So let's say if child is null. Null child. Okay, so a null child would effectively mean that we can just replace it like that, right? So we're going to create I'm going to set this up first. So this is going to be a size of a node. And this new child should assert it. Uh, allocate the child node for AST. Sure. So we create this new child. I would like to copy. I see this is also a new child. Too many names. This is going to be given. Now we'll keep that as new. And then this is just going to be allocated child. Why not? And copy into the allocated child. And the new child, the size of a node, yeast, which I guess is the same as doing something like this. Sure. All right, so we now allocate a new child and we free it or not free it, we allocate a new child 
assert that it exists, copy from the given child, and so this child needs to be inserted into this parent's list. So we can say if there is already child equals parent children, while child, child equals child next, child, right? So this will loop over the parent's children until we get to a null pointer. That will go until we get a null pointer next, which means this is the last in the list. Then we can just say the next child is equal to the allocated child. Otherwise, we can just set the first one. So I actually, would this code work? So if parent has a null parent children, then we would see we don't want to do that because we would dereference a null in that scenario. What if we did this? What if we did this? So allocated child equals new child. So parent children being null would fall through and we'd set the child's next child. See, that wouldn't work either. Yeah, I don't, I think this is a different code. It's not gonna, we can't reduce it. Okay, so now the parent either gets updated or one of its children gets updated with another child in the list. That doesn't seem like anything too crazy. Okay, terrible code, yes, hello. Add a child to the variable declaration, please. And what child, why did I do it like that? What am I on, jeez. So we're gonna add, I guess we added to the end, so which child would we like to add first? A variable declaration, let's see. It looks like we have the type and then the symbol. So node, type node equals, I guess it doesn't matter. Give me an empty node. All right. What are we checking for? We would like to check that this is an integer because that's just the type we got. Perfect. So now that we have a type, we can insert this type node. And we can also have the symbol added here as well, I believe. Look at us. So it looks like the var decal may just be able to become that in the tree. So this is a variable with an integer zero and a symbol of A. I guess we could just have the value in an initialized. Okay, that's what we'll do. This is cool. We're parsing a variable declaration, everybody. It's happening. It's not done yet by any means, but we made progress in this stream. We actually parse.
So this type, all it's actually going to do is set the value of the existing one. So it would not look like this because this repeats the integer inf type information. I don't think we need to do that because this node can contain 20. So I think it would look more like this. I think that's better. And that'll be uh, easier to traverse when we're generating code from it. All right, the day has went really good. We got followers, we got people on Discord, we made progress on our program. This is awesome. This is going really well. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Be sure to hit that Discord down below so that you can get notified. Every time I go live, I make an announcement in this channel, and uh, if you're part of the server, you'll get notified when it happens. Look at all these people that joined. See, today we got Lord MZTE in here. Hooray! And all these people that joined, I really like them. We chat in the text channel and have fun. I really recommend it. There's also my YouTube down below, which contains all my VODs, which are the, the videos from the streams. And uh, so if you're interested in past streams, you can check out the YouTube, watch them there. And today, there's a new thing. There's a donate button down right down below, or in the about section if you're on mobile. And uh, you, there's an option there to donate monthly. You can use PayPal or a credit card to pay. And uh, I would really appreciate any and all donations, but only do it if you can give money, obviously. I, I, I do not want to take your money that you need. Anyways, I think that's my entire spiel done, my little marketing blurb. And uh, if that is all from you, then that is all from me. I really appreciate everybody coming out. I'll get this, uh, the changes we made today up onto the Git, GitHub, I guess. Uh, later today, when I can, I believe. Maybe uh, in a few hours. Thank you so much for watching once again. I really appreciate it. And uh, be sure to come out next time. Thank you so much, and goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. Bye, mailman. Bye, neighbor. Bye.